dad, really from the womb, I think had me pegged as a baseball player. He recognized that as an infant I was a left-handed thrower. He said I used to throw my bottle out of my crib left-handed. And he was concerned because when uh, he initially took me out in the backyard with a little Snoopy bat or whatever, I got up there right-handed. So I'm a natural right-handed hitter and a left-handed thrower. And so he got the idea that I should be a switch hitter that he wanted to do something that was going to give me a little bit of an advantage. This is this guy's mindset. I mean, I'm a, I'm a five-year-old or a four-year-old out there, and he's, he's thinking long-term, like, I need to give him an edge so he could possibly play in the big leagues. Coach Graham's tough. Uh, one time in particular, I mean, I was crying, you know, because he was so hard on me. And I, you know, when I talk about my baseball career, the two guys that I give the most credit, my dad, number one, for you know, sort of teaching me the game, but then I give Coach Graham another half of the credit for making me mentally tough. It was my sophomore year. We had a guy come in to the program. Um, his name was Jake Baker, and he was fun to hang out with, so we became fast friends. Uh, but the more I got to hanging around Jake, the more I realized there's something different about this guy. My image of sort of a born-again or a real committed Christian was was kind of a nerdy guy that sits in the corner and reads his Bible and you know just is soft and won't compete or won't hardly raise his voice. But this dude blew that out of the water. He wasn't soft at all. But here's this guy that's that's a true man and, and yet he loves the Lord and you could tell it in everything he did. And so through him and through our relationship the Lord started working on my heart. And some people can point to the exact moment like it was 9.30 a.m. on you know, May the 27th. I can't do that. For me, it was a more gradual process, but I did come to a place where I was like, I gotta get off the fence here. I mean, I can't live with one foot in the world and one foot in the church. I need to be sold out for Jesus. been in Houston for 11 years, then having to go to a new place, especially New York, and, and trying to learn the ropes and, and come into a new team. The first two weeks after I got traded over there, I wanted, I mean, I, I had to fight back tears just about every day. There were plenty of times during that thing where I was thinking, man, if I could just get to the end of the season, I'm never gonna, I'll never play again. I tend to link my performance on the field with my worth in general. And so when I'm not playing well, um, I, I tend to, to get into a real dark mood and it affects my relationship with my wife and I'm not as effective as a father and I'm certainly not as good a teammate and, and it's a real struggle for me to fight those highs and lows. My focus was I'd love to go play in St. Louis. I felt like, man, this is a win-win situation, and, and it turned out to be that way. I mean, it was just uh, everything I thought that it would be and, and more. The Bible, you know, talks not about being perfect. In fact, it guarantees that we're going to stumble, but it's what you do when you're at a low ebb of your life. It's the decision that you make when you're sitting there you know, kind of bleeding in the dirt. You know, do you lay there and die or do you get up and, and press on? You look at the life of Jesus in the Bible, God is that man alive today and the same life that Jesus demonstrated is available to all believers.